It was recently the uh, 57th birthday of the basic programming language, which uh, a lot of people, certainly in my generation, uh, cut their teeth, did their first coding uh, using basic on the home computers of the uh, sort of 70s and 80s. Um, also worth noting, while we're remembering the uh, the birthday of the basic programming language in 1964 uh, at Dartmouth College in the United States, that part of the team that brought us basic was one of the first people and certainly the first woman to get a PhD in computer science in the United States. Sister Mary Kenneth Keller. It's worth investigating a little bit more about her, her extraordinary life. I discovered while I was uh, thinking about basic that there is a port of tiny basic uh, for the BBC Microbit. Uh, it's Japanese, and I've known about this for a while, but never really got to grips with it. I must admit, I thought it was probably a bit of a novelty. I couldn't really see the point uh, in running BASIC on a BBC micro bit, as you almost certainly need a computer to connect to it that's more powerful than the micro bit and can run BASIC itself. So what's the point in running it uh, on the micro bit? I had a play with it this weekend and actually it's really clever it's really neat and uh, there is some value to it intrinsically and um, we'll look at, at what it can do in a moment um, this is uh, the code for it is on github um, you can translate it if you're using chrome easily using google translate so you can follow the page but if you're not doing that at least one thing that you need if you scroll down you need to download this zip file here uh, unpack it there's a hex file in there that you can flash onto your micro bit uh, connect it to your computer and it will run you need a V1 micro bit for this. It doesn't work on the latest V2 micro bit yet. It hasn't been updated. Uh, you also need some sort of serial program on your computer uh, to connect to the micro bit so you can communicate it because you'll be using the, your computer's screen and keyboard uh, to type on. And you can use uh, the Python editor, which I discovered the uh, online Python editor, you can use that. But um, to handle scrolling and things like that, this web serial based uh, version is really good. You'll need to use Chrome or a browser that supports web serial. Uh, I'll put the address in the links here. So this is basically a serial terminal that just runs in a web browser. So you don't have to install any software. Uh, the default settings here are actually probably fine. Uh, that's the board rate you want. Uh, 8 bit data bit parity none stop bit one. Click on connect. Look for your micro bit in the list. So here is my micro bit. I will connect and pair. And now it is connected. And if I go at the command prompt and I type list, you'll see I'm actually, I'm going to type some rubbish in. Got a syntax error. I am um, at a basic command prompt. And if I reset the micro bit, you can see there's the welcome screen. I'm in tiny basic. Really clever thing is you can save programs. So like you would on an old fashioned computer, save programs to cassette, or if you had a Sinclair Spectrum, you might save them on a micro drive or on a more advanced machine on a floppy disk. Here you can save programs to the flash memory on your micro bit and it's persistent. You can unplug the micro bit and the programs stay there. It's brilliant. The files command is what you need. So this will show you uh, all the programs that I've got saved. So I've got seven programs that um, I've copied out of the instructions. There is a really good manual for it. Uh, very full uh, full manual again in Japanese it's a PDF in Japanese but you can use Google Translate to translate PDFs uh, so you can upload a PDF so you can uh, you can read the manual and it does a pretty good job so uh, I thoroughly recommend looking at the manual I'll just show you very quickly uh, a few of the things that I've done with it um, so let's just do a basic uh, thing to sort of interact with the screen so if I do load one that will load my hello program hello world program and if I list it there we go it's a very simple program the sort of first thing that most people would type uh, on a computer uh, print hello world it waits a little bit and then goes back in a loop and then we'll run it typing run and then you'll see it's typing hello world in the uh, in the serial window uh, I get out of it by pressing control c and then if I go back to files again, I'll have a look at the other programs that I've got. Um, so that's got a program running uh, on the uh, on the console window. The joy of this, though, is you can actually uh, interact with the micro bit and use lots of features on the micro bit. So I can access the uh, LED display. So if I load program three and then I'll list that, see if you can guess what this does. Message left 100. Hello world. Right. Let's run that. I'm gonna have a look and you'll see that that's now scrolling text left. Uh, on the LED display, uh, 100 is the speed, how fast or, or, or slow it goes. Um, it's fully featured as well. It's got quite a good uh, Japanese, it seems to have support for Japanese characters uh, and it supports NeoPixels as well. So you can put an 8x8 external NeoPixel display on it and control that, which is quite amazing. I haven't got one of those, so I haven't tried doing that. Let's try another program. Let's just make the LED display blink. So if I do load two, 
Let's have a look at that program. This is a, a program just to access one of the uh, individual LEDs. And if I run that, you should see the LED is blinking on and off. There we go. And let's look at my files again. Let's have a look at lighting every LED. So we'll load five and this that program. This is a program that uses four loops just to light every pixel on the LED display. I'll run that. You should see it's scrolling across the LED display and clear that. Uh, you can read analog input. So if I load program six and this that, this takes a reading from pin zero uh, and prints it in the same place on the screen. So if I run this now, uh, you'll see it clears the screen and puts a value uh, on the screen. I'm not touching the pin, but as soon as I touch the pin, you'll see the value going up because it's actually reading because my body's conducting a bit of electricity. So it's actually getting an analog um, reading going in on pin zero. So you can access the pins in that way. And if I list, my, oh no, I want my files for you again. So I'll list all my files. What else have we not done? We've lit every LED. Uh, we've done blink, we've done hello world. Ah, oh, buttons, yeah, you can make buttons work. So if I do load program zero, you can put interaction with buttons uh, on the micro bit in your program. So if I run this and now if I press button A, it says button A on the screen. Press button A again. There we go. And if I press button B, button B. There we go. So you can use button interaction uh, in your program. So there we go. It's absolutely uh, a fascinating project. I really recommend playing with it. You don't actually need any hardware at all, really, just to get started with it. It's got some other features as well. You can attach a P so speaker to pin eight uh, and play tones and tunes out of it. Uh, you can make a program in uh, file slot zero run automatically at startup by pressing button B when you reset the micro bit. Uh, so that's quite nice as well. So you could use it a bit more like a normal micro bit where you program it and then unplug it from your computer and run it on batteries and get it to do something you can still do that uh, with tiny basic on it um, it's got a real-time clock um, obviously the clock will reset when you unplug it from the power but you, you've got a real-time clock in there that uses years months days hours minutes and seconds so on all part of the basic language and even though it's tiny basic it's incredibly um, incredibly featureful uh, there's an awful lot you can do with this basic programming language oh,